This is very, very fundamental. This is the holy grail of marketing. There is a vertical axis where you measure uniqueness. There's a horizontal axis where you measure value. This is a two by two McKinsey-esque matrix. And I won't charge you 25 grand to tell you, but you want to be in the upper right hand corner, okay? <laughs> so, before we get into the upper right hand corner, let's explore the other three corners. The bottom right corner. In the bottom right corner is where you make something that's valuable, but it's not unique. You slap the same operating system on the same hard disk and stick it in the same kind of chassis. Okay, you know, that's valuable, but you will always have to compete on price. That's what Dell has to do, compete on price with Dell and Lenovo and Gateway and HP. Same OS, same hardware, you compete on price. Not a bad place to be, at least it's valuable, but as long as you understand, you have to compete on price. Next corner. In this corner, you have created something that only you do. It's unique, but it is not valuable. In that corner, you are just plain stupid. <laughs> The bottom left corner is the worst corner of all because in this corner, you have something that's not valuable and not unique. That's what I call the dot-com corner. Okay? So let's, let's review one company from the dot-com days in particular, Pets.com. Pets.com, let me pitch you the selling proposition of Pets.com. There are 300 million Americans. One in four owns a dog, 75 million dogs. Each dog eats two cans of dog food per day. It's 150 million cans of dog food per day, total addressable market. How hard could it be to get 1% of 150 million cans of dog food per day? That's for crying out loud, one and a half million cans of dog food per day. Let's say we make gross margin of a buck a can. That's one and a half million dollars of gross margin per day. Conservatively speaking, worst case. And this is a 365 day a year business. Dogs do not take the weekend off from eating. <laughs> That's the pitch. That's the total addressable market. Now, what's your competitive advantage? Well, it's a supply chain management issue, all right? So we have a dog, we have a cow, okay? You need to kill the cow, chop it up, put it in a can, get it to the dog. That's it. That's the dog food business. So Pets.com looked at this and said, well, you know, why is there a pet food store in the middle? What value does the pet food store add? Do people take their dogs and go and do taste tests? Uh, do, do the owners do the taste tests themselves? Why do we have a pet food store? People have to get in their car, drive to the pet food store, find parking, go into the pet food store, get the thing, drag it out, drive home, all that. Let's eliminate the pet food store. Let's just ship it directly to their house. Hallelujah. Now, there's a problem with that. You can discount pet food a lot because you took out the retailer. But, but, you know what? Dead cows in cans weigh a lot. So you may eliminate the pet food retailer, but then you have to add in shipping and handling. And the shipping and handling roughly equated the discount that you removed because of the pet food retailer. So you paid just as much, and then it was arguably less convenient because now when the pet food, the dead cows in cans got delivered to your house, somebody had to be at home. So it was less convenient and just as expensive. That's not exactly valuable. Then people like me, you know, we saw that one venture capitalist had a pets.com. So in our portfolio, we needed a pets.com. So that's why there was pets.com, epets.com, ipets.com, lastminutepets.com, discountpets.com, latinamericanpets.com. There was like 16 ways to spend as much money on dog food and be inconvenienced. It was amazing. It was no value and not unique. So the corner you want to be in as an innovator is the upper right-hand corner. Some tactical examples for you. As you can imagine, any family that has four TiVos love the movies. I love to take my kids to the movies. It is a pain in the ass to take kids to the movies, right? You have to get them in the minivan, you have to strap them in, make sure they're not fighting, you just drive to the theater. What if you did all that and you got to the theater and the tickets were sold out? Oh my God, what are you gonna do? What's, let's say the tickets were not sold out, but there's a long line to get the tickets. Even that's a pain in the ass. So Fandango, for the theater we go, the only way we can buy a ticket and print it off on, at home is Fandango. I pay a buck and a half more per ticket so that I know I have a ticket and I don't have to stand in the line. That's unique and valuable. Another example, Breitling Emergency Watch. 
Running emergency watch. If you pull the big knob, if you unscrew the big knob at the four o'clock position and pull that out, out pops an antenna. That antenna starts broadcasting a signal to airplanes that there's an emergency. It's 121.5 megahertz emergency. Now, if you do this, this is a big deal, okay? This is not like you took the wrong exit. <laughs> when you do this, a few minutes later, Kevin Costner will be in a Coast Guard helicopter looking for you. <laughs> Okay? They're going to drop the wire basket. They're looking for you. So if you do this and it's not an emergency, it's a quarter million dollar fine, FYI. But just so you know, this is the only, this is the only watch that I know that can save your life. Right? So if you're a skier, if you're a sailor, if you're really out of luck up the creek without a paddle, this is the watch. It can save your life. This is a smart car, recently came to America. All of us have cars that can park parallel to the curb. When there's lots of space, that's no problem. Park parallel to the curb. How many of you have a car that can park perpendicular to the curb? <laughs> that's truly unique. Park perpendicular to the curb. So these are all examples of products that for me are in the upper right hand corner. Unique and valuable. I can only buy tickets at Fandango. I can only have one watch that saves my life. I can only have one car that I can park perpendicular when there is no parking. The holy grail of marketing is to be in that upper right hand corner. Okay, that's where meaning is made, that's where margin is made, that's where money is made, that's where history is made. You should always be thinking how do we convince the world that we have a product or service that is unique and valuable.